Hi everyone, this is Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make this two-tone, very contemporary looking table runner. It's really quick and really simple project to put together. So let's get started. This table runner is approximately 12 inches by 72 inches. If you wanted to make it shorter, you could eliminate some of the squares. Out of fabric A and B, you will need nine four and a half inch squares and six four and a half by 12 and a half inch strips. You'll need five eighths of a yard of fabric A and fabric B, seven eighths of a yard of fabric for the back side. You'll need one half yard of cotton batting. The size it needs to be is about 15 inches by 74. If you're buying it off of the big bolt, like I do, do those great big long round bolts, I just used a half a yard. But if you're buying it in smaller packages, make sure that you can get it to that length here. I have folded my fabric in half and I need to straighten out these edges down here. So I'm pulling it past this first uh, line here on the cutting mat. And always use the lines on your mat to make sure your fabric is straight and that your ruler is straight. So I place my ruler on this first line up here as well as down there. And I'm going to cut this edge straight. You need to cut four four and a half inch wide strip. So don't move the fabric, lift the ruler up, place it on the four and a half inch line. Once you have it all lined up, then cut your first two strips. Move it over one more time. Again, do not move the fabric. Move it over four and a half inches more which would put me on this nine inch line right here. And now you have your strips cut out. Take three of the strips and stack them. And you're going to cut this selvage edge off over here. So I'm going to place my ruler on this zero line again just to cut these selvage edges off. Now I'm going to move the ruler over to the 12 and a half inch line to cut out my strips that need to be four and a half by 12 and a half. Take your last strip and I'm going to cut the selvage edges off. Move this back just a little bit. Make sure that strip is going straight across this way. Again, use the lines on the cutting mat to keep everything straight. Now you had a piece left over, some pieces left over from the previous cut on the other strips. I'm going to place it on there and I'm going to use it to cut out what I need for my three and a half inch squares. So now I'm going to, excuse me, four and a half inch squares. So I'm going to go over four and a half inches and I'm going to be doing a cut because you need nine four and a half inch squares. So you're just going to keep moving over every four and a half inches cutting out the squares that you need. So remember you're cutting the same amount of fabric pieces, the same sizes out of both your A and B fabrics. Take one dark and two lights and stitch them one quarter inch on each side. And if you haven't heard the term scant quarter inch, what that means is you stitch slightly under a quarter inch. So usually if you're doing quilting, it's always a scant quarter of an inch. Then after you've done that, press the seams on the back side and then unfold and press on top and you always press your seams towards the darkest fa uh, fabric. You make three like this and then on this one you make three just the opposite 
And when you press the seams on this one, you press the seams going towards the dark strips here. Take your long inch strips, which are 12 and a half inches long, and stitch them on each side of the block, and again using that scant quarter of an inch. Then press the seams on the back side, and then press on the front. And you're going to make three like this, and then three like this. Lay the blocks out in this order and then stitch them together using a scant quarter inch seam. Then press on the back side your seams and then press on the top side and make sure you press the seams towards the darkest fabric. When you're laying the blocks out Lay them out so that your longest seams are going from side to side. This way you don't have to worry about matching the seams. If you laid all your seams going top to bottom, you're going to have to worry about matching the seams. This way there's no worry about matching seams. Fold your fabric for the back of the table runner in half. Remember you need about 7 eighths of a yard. On the fold, place a pin so you know that that's the center. Then unfold it, place your ruler on where that pin is, and then cut the fabric in half. Stack the two pieces on top of each other, and this, here's my selvage edges. So line it up and you're going to cut those selvage edges off. Then bringing the two pieces together, bring the front side of the fabric together, and then you're going to stitch them using a half inch seam right along here. Press the seam on the back side and then press the seam open. Lay your table runner fabric on top of the fabric for the back and make sure you have anywhere from an inch and a half to two inches extending out on this end. Then go to the other end of your table runner and you'll see that you've got this excess fabric here. Go ahead and cut one to two inches past the end down here of the runner itself and get rid of some of this fabric. Now you want to cut a piece of cotton batting that is the same size as the fabric for the back. Now you're going to layer all the fabrics. So take the fabric for the back of the table runner and place it to where the front side is down or the pretty side. That is down. Then your cotton batting is next and then your table runner. Now make sure you have a fabric extending around all four sides. This will be trimmed off later. Pin all the layers together. You can either use straight pins or safety pins. Because this is just a table runner, it's not that large. If all you have is straight pins, that should be fine. You want to place them, scatter them all over the top of the table runner or if you have safety pins you can also use these and I would also recommend if you're doing a large quilt I would do the safety pins and not straight pins so you want to put that all over the top then you're going to do quilting stitches and if you have a walking foot like this this will help prevent your fabrics from shifting while you are stitching on it you can get these on Amazon.com. Just enter the name of your sewing machine model number and that you want a walking foot and options will appear. Now here are some suggested quilting stitch patterns. You can just do straight lines a few inches apart, two to three inches apart, side to side and up and down. You could even do it at a diagonal. You can also use decorative quilting stitches if you have those on your machine. Again, side to side and up and down. 
and you could also go corner to corner. Another one if you feel overwhelmed by the quilting stitches is to do stitch in the ditch which is like here's a ditch. This is where two pieces of fabric come together. You can just stitch right in there and you can go all the way down the fabric and then you can come back and then just stitch along this ditch all the way down from one end to the other. After you have all the layers pinned, I suggest that you roll it up like this. Slip this under the arm of your sewing machine and then as you're stitching it's much easier to control it when it's like this. So then you would just unroll it a little bit, pull your fabric out and just keep stitching. And then as this gets longer out here, you can roll this end up and then it's so easy to control everything. After you have completed your quilting stitches, you need to trim this excess fabric and cotton batting off. So you're going to line your ruler up along the edge of your table runner and go around all four sides and trim this off. After trimming your edges, then your table runner is ready to put on the quilt binding. If you need instructions on how to put that on, then go to the green screen at the end of this video and click on a link that's called Fear of Quilt Binding. If you're interested in learning how to put on flange quilt binding, which is this additional piece of fabric that you see right here, then at the green screen at the end of this video, click on flange quilt binding. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on thumbs up and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Enter your email address, click on that little bell so you receive email notifications about my latest video. I'm Cheryl and I'm so glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time and happy sewing!